What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Audio Architects and another edition of Hi-Fi Hour. This is a brand new season of Hi-Fi Hour, so I'm really excited to start it off with a good buddy of mine, Steve Niemi from Pangea Audio. How you doing, Steve? Hey, Mike. Doing great. Thanks for having me today. Hey, it's a pleasure. Uh, I know we've met, uh, you know, briefly before during a, a previous live stream, but I, I felt that, uh, you know, um, I wanted to kind of go more in depth about Pangea and about you, um, especially since, you know, uh, we, we do have a, a mutual friend, you know, <laughs> and, and we kind of uh, broke the ice that way, which is cool. You know, it's, al it's always funny that in the audio world, it's so small. It's such a small community. And people may think, you know, someone that, that a consumer that goes into like a Best Buy and buys a pair of Klipsch speakers or a pair of Martin Logans, they're not understanding how small that community is. They think it's this huge conglomerate. But in real, real, realistically, you know, I mean, a company like Martin Logan only has, you know, a couple dozen employees, you know, that work in the office. So <clears throat> they don't understand how small this community is and how, you know, close people can get, you know, as far as that as that goes. So um, what I wanted to ask you first is uh, you work for Pangea. Formerly, you worked for AudioQuest. Um, obviously, uh, AudioQuest is a juggernaut in the cable cable industry and, and you know, audio peripheral industry. So what, what is the history of Pangea uh, before you got there up until now? And why did you make that move from AudioQuest to Pangea? Yeah, so AudioQuest, or actually let's talk with, about Pangea first. So Pangea, I've, only, I've been with Pangea now six years. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it started, uh, I want to say 11 and a half years ago at a CES. And um, the idea was at the time, um, that audio doesn't have to be expensive. Hobbies, you know, in general can be expensive, whether you're a pilot, you're into motorcycles, cycling, cars. I mean, hobbies are expensive and audio is no exception, exception of that hi-fi. And the idea was uh, it, great products don't have to necessarily be expensive. So uh, Jay Victor, who um, we should cover his background a little bit. He's, he's our, uh, he was our man on the ground and still is to this day. And the idea was we wanted just to have a power cable that was affordable. So why a power cable? Well, uh, you know, cables in general can be, you know, th there's a lot of names for it. Uh, you know, there are believers, there are non-believers. Uh, you know, there's, 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 you know, magic pixie dust in these, what's going on with the cables. So one of the issues we saw with cables at the time was, it's very, they're very expensive. High-end cables can be very expensive. So how do we bring, how do we bring um, this cable, a power cable, uh, to a point where anybody can bring it into their home and try it out? So the idea was to come up with a power cable that was just $30. And anybody, I'm holding up, this is our AC-14. This is was our, um, sorry for the lighting there. Uh, our first foray, and it still exists in the line today, it's a $30 uh, power cable. So uh, approach Jay Victor. We should talk about Jay a little bit. Uh, Jay has been in the audio industry for decades. Uh, he didn't start as an audio engineer. He actually started as a, uh, uh, an electrical engineer in the commercial world, uh, worked on all kinds of devices, x-rays, high voltage devices, uh, you name it, but he was an audiophile. So in that, he started doing audio design for, and in fact, we could probably name any cable brand out there, and Jay has probably made or designed a cable for that cable brand. So when we had to, we don't have an engineer of our own, so we had to find someone. Uh, Jay just happened to be uh, willing and able, and actually was kind of excited to take it on, just to take everything that he knew about cable design and really bring it down to a point where anybody could afford it. Mm -hmm. So that's really where we started was with a single power cable that anybody could buy, any could anybody could bring it home, and then they could decide whether they're a believer or not. So that was really the basis of the brand was making a cable and making products that anybody can afford, saying audio doesn't have to be expensive, high-end audio doesn't have to be expensive, and it really is accessible. And that's where the the cable the the brand Pangea started. Oh, that, I mean that's 
that same, I don't know if you remember, but um, it's kind of like the business model that Carver had back in the day where they wanted to build a, a solid, strong amplifier, but not charge those, those high end prices. You know, I mean, it was, I mean, it was still kind of an expensive amplifier, I mean, but, but, but it was, you know, <clears throat> similar business model where you wanted to provide your, your customers, your customer base and, and everybody uh, that wants to get into this hobby, an option that is feasible for a lot of consumers, you know, and I agree with you. There's a lot of uh, cable companies out there that, you know, may sprinkle that, you know, pixie dust on their, on their cable yeah. and, and, and call it special. Um, I've had the opportunity to hear high end cables and just regular cables and stuff like that. Um, uh, and this is a, I'm not going to make a comment because <laughs> we'll see in the comments. <laughs> it'll, it'll, it'll erupt. However, um, I think that people should just listen for themselves and see the, 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 the non-believers, the, 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 the people that are doubting it. And even the people that, you know, are the believers, they should listen to a good variety of cables and see if they do honestly hear an audible difference. Uh, you know, uh, I think everybody should just trust their own ears rather than trust mine as a reviewer or you as, as you know, as, as actual cable company. Um, but I, you know, I've taken a look at your products online and they not only look good, but they look like they actually do a great job. You know what I'm saying? Like, they, they have that purpose. Um, now with your experience in audio quest, did you bring some of that, some of that juice over to Pangea or are you trying to do something completely different and completely unique? Uh, oh, I did bring my experience over. I was at audio quest for, for 12 years. Mm. Um, great company. Uh, they've really made some great products. And before I joined them, I was a believer in cables. I, you know, had, uh, cables, you know, from anywhere from the stuff I made myself to I think my first real high end pair of speaker cables was a seven foot pair of bedrock that uh, one of my sales rep friends got me through an accommodation program, uh, AudioQuest bedrock. And, you know, when I got those cables home, it completely transformed my system. So that was my first step into high end cables. I don't remember what year that was. That was probably the early 90s. So I did bring over the belief from about cables that, uh, like you said, listening for myself. Mm. Um, I don't spend a lot of time reading the online forums or the blogs trying to convince people that cables make a difference. In fact, you probably won't see any comments from Pangea Audio on any of those forums because really the best way to convince someone is not by arguing with them online. It's like you said. Take it home and listen. If it doesn't matter, if it doesn't make a difference for you, then send it back. Don't buy it. You know, get a refund. What, whatever the case may be. But you know, cables do make a difference. Then um, you're clearly going to hear it when you get it home. So what I did bring over with me was uh, was my belief in cables and what they can do. Mm -hmm. And I do I do wear two hats at Pangea. Uh, I have the title. Uh, I have sales in my title. Uh, but I also spend about half of my time on the product development side, and that is working with Jay Victor, working with the factories, working with our team in Pangea, uh, taking a product concept. We're talking about maybe we want to make this next cable or this next product or record doctor or what have you. We do a lot of furniture as well in the Pangea line, um, helping coordinate all of those efforts to bring that product to life. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I do have the Vulcan rack from Pangea uh, in carbon fiber. And I got to tell you, after I built it, because I, I did buy, I did have, I have another rack from a company we won't mention. And similar in price, similar in price. I just felt the Pangea swung way above its price point, way above its price point in quality in and just just the build quality is amazing the finish is beautiful you know and, and you know how i am i'm when i'm reviewing things i'm swapping things in and out and stuff like that it doesn't scratch it doesn't that 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 finish is just absolutely phenomenal and um and that's and that's great that you are now you know stepping into that realm as well because uh you know this is all stuff people need 
you know, if they're, if they're serious about starting a two channel hobby or even, you know, for multi-channel, it would work just fine. Um, those racks are incredible and, and you offer different, you know, uh, different options, you know, you offer different sizes. I, I, I could say as a, as a actual user and, 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 you know, proponent of it. I love it. I love it. I think you guys made Thanks. a solid product. Thanks. Yeah, we, we moved into furniture a few years ago and started with just with a basic four shelf rack. Um, at the time it was, I think $99 is where we started and uh, yeah. all assembles with no tools uh, and it's modular. So you can add shelves, you can add casters, you can add drawers, everything. Once it has the word Vulcan by Pangea on it, everything becomes interchangeable. Mm. The four different colors, black. There's a carbon fiber vinyl, which you mentioned, which I'll hold up here. That's gorgeous. Yeah, I love it. And, yeah, like you said, I mean, just it's you, you can't damage it. Um, there's an espresso kind of which changes colors from a dark brown to a black. And then our basic black. And what? we offer a three shelf version, which has uh, LP storage at the bottom. And it's got an extra top, extra thick top shelf for your turntable. So that line for us has been uh, great. And thanks for your um, compliments on the quality. Uh, we really spent a lot of time finding the right factory to build that for us. And we've been building it in the same factory now since day one, I think three years now. And it wasn't hard to build at all. I actually, I did a, in, there's an Instagram, uh, Instagram TV video I put out there where uh, I, I kind of sped up the process because I didn't want any, everybody to like, sit there and watch me build this thing. So I, I did it under, uh, I sped it up to the point where it was about five minutes from beginning to end. And you can just see how easy it was for me to kind of just put everything together and everything. And that's available on my uh, IGT, uh, IGTV uh, on Instagram at RD Architects. And it was so simple to put together. It wasn't, you know, so, sometimes like I had a harder time putting together a bathroom rack than I did <laughs> Then I did this, uh, this Pangea uh, Vulcan. And I, <clears throat> I was, like I said, I was very impressed because uh, there was a moment where one of my amps, um, I, ha I hadn't put my isolation feet on them yet, my little uh, pads, you know, because I put pads on everything. And because I, I do, I believe in that. And I know I'll get probably crucified in stone for that, but um, I, I believe in it. I, I've heard the difference. So uh, I, I didn't have my pads on it. So I, when I pulled it out, I kind of heard a, you know, because it was a kind of a sharp, uh, the, the the Stark amp I was using was kind of sharp. And I'm like, oh, my God, I just destroyed this thing. I just, I literally just scratched it. I, oh, I, and I took it out. I looked, nothing. Nothing. Not a, not a, not a scuff. So that's, that's impressive to me. Uh, now, as far as your cables go, uh, I am going to be uh, uh, experiencing your cables soon, I believe. So I'm actually going to be using all Pangea products within my two channel system, hopefully from here on out, um, for all my testing and as reference. So, uh, anybody that, you know, experience uh, that, you know, watches my videos and watches my reviews, uh, fairly soon there will be only Pangea products from beginning to end. Um, aside from multi-channel stuff, cause I don't, do you guys do H do you guys do HDMI? We do, yeah. In fact, uh, we have a HDMI. Uh, we have two levels. We have an entry level, which is just OFC copper, and then we have an upper level model, which uses Cardis uh, copper with silver plating on it. The HDMI SE, which is the Cardis with silver, uh, completely sold out. We are switching factories on that because the factory we we're using to silver plate the Cardis uh, mm -hmm. can't do that anymore. So uh, there'll be probably, we won't see that until December, I'm guessing, if then. Uh, right. But we should be back into the HDMI uh, product again, uh, again by December. And right now, uh, we probably would have sent you cables if you'd actually had any. But, uh, you know, the pan well, there's two things that happened. Um, one is the pandemic really uh, slowed us down on production. You know, getting raw materials to the factory took a long time. Right. And then people are staying at home buying audio and racks and cables and you know vinyl and you name it so it just depleted our inventory so i think one of the cables that um we were going to send you is uh ac9 you know, a right. couple of our ac9 power cables right uh, these actually will be back in stock here fairly soon it's a seven gauge cable whereas like the ac14 is made more for source components right your blu-ray players your streamers things like that and then this will be for 
uh, your subwoofers, amplifiers, things like that. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm excited about it because um, a lot of people do ask me, you know, about cables and stuff like that. And I, I just feel that it would be a little more responsible on my end to offer um, a, 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 a reasonably priced offering, you know, um, because I, I in, recently in my videos, I, I go through my signal chain and I also put it in my description and I let people know, okay, what cables I use, what, you know, preamp I use. So that way they have a good idea of what kind of, what, what I matched everything with, you know, if I'm, if I'm reviewing speakers or if I'm reviewing a source, I want people to know what I matched it with. So that way, cause the thing with reviewers is that people have to take their opinions with, with, with a slight grain of salt only because every speaker and every component, every source is going to sound different in everybody's home uh, to, to some degree or another, um, especially with room treatments and, and stuff like that. So I encourage people like if they're interested in a product, like especially, you know, uh, speakers and, and amplifiers and stuff like that is to test it out in their own environment, you know, uh, definitely listen to reviewers because then I wouldn't obviously have any views and <laughs> I would be pointless. But, uh, but at the same time, I mean, if someone is, if I, if I'm, you know, really cheerleading for a product, which, um, I believe Pangea has a bright, bright future because they, they got it down. You know, people don't want to spend a lot of money after they spent, you know, let's say they spent 2000 on speakers, a thousand on an amp, you know, after all that, then you got companies telling them, well, you know, you should spend this much on your cables. And it's like, what if they got nothing left? You know, what if they only have a, you know, a small budget of maybe 500 or less Pangea would be an amazing, amazing option because you can literally outfit your entire system for, for probably 500 or less. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, the only thing we're not doing at this point is speaker cable, but as far as interconnects, power cables, USB, HDMI, um, you know, we have a phono cable, you know, for tone, a phono cable that has just sold great headphone extension cable, a uh, huge lineup. I just, I was working on an Excel version of our price book for our dealers and distributors. I think by the time I got all the SKUs in there, including the Shuko versions of our power cables for Europe, I, th I think it was over 800 rows of data, just of different models and SKUs and lengths. And that's just in the, the Pangea line. That's not even the Vulcan furniture or any of the other brands that, um, uh, that we deal with at Pangea Audio Distributing. So, you mentioned that you don't do speaker cables. Is that a, you, we don't do a speaker cables yet, or is that a, we're not really into, we're not really interested in doing it. No, in fact, um, yeah, let's talk about speaker cables. Uh, I did say yet. And I said that very purposely. Okay. Uh, I have some prototypes here that we got maybe six months ago and they're really good. And yeah, you're peaking, uh, you're peaking I, my interest right now because that's, <laughs> That's important. Uh, yeah. Uh, but we haven't gone into production with anything. We haven't finalized anything. Uh, we do have the connectors picked out. We have the finishes, you know, the braid. Um, you know, we have some by wire options. We have some full range options. It's just those decisions haven't been made yet. So it's you know, cable design and bringing a cable uh, to life isn't as easy as flipping a switch. And in fact, I mean, you or I could go into the cable business tomorrow. We could send an email to one of the factories in Asia um, and say, I want a speaker cable and I want it to be branded audio architects and I want it to be black. And then here's what the packaging should look like. And three months later, there's a product at your door. That's right. just an off the shelf product. Um, we don't, we don't work that way. Most of the better cable companies, some of which you and I've talked about already, don't operate that way. You don't buy off shelf. Every part, every conductor, the braid, the uh, PVC, the molding done for the plug itself mm -hmm. is specific to that brand and to that design. So with our speaker cable, um, you know, there's a lot of details, like with anybody's speaker cable, that's not mm -hmm. off the shelf. There's a lot of details to take into consideration. So uh, it is a work in progress. When, when that'll happen, I don't, I don't know, but uh, you heard it here first. Well, uh, everybody's hearing it here first. Um, 
uh, and I'm excited because uh, a while back, uh, Audio Architects actually started as a uh, an idea to get into the speaker cable business. Now, after, <laughs> after a little bit of uh, research, you know, and a little bit of time I spent, I actually did a video. One of my man, this was way back in the catalog. I did a video showing how I, I built my own, you know, my own cable and my own hi-fi cable using, you know, things I bought from Amazon and parts express and things of that sort. Um, I didn't know first and foremost, uh, I don't know if I'm arthritic, but <laughs> after, <laughs> after making a couple pairs of cables, I was like, Oh my God, my hands are just, Oh gosh, man, it's starting to hurt. Um, I think it's cool to make your own hi-fi cables. I'd actually like to, since we're so close in proximity, definitely uh, sit down and geek out about building cables because I have one way of doing it. But if you have another way of doing it, I would love to do a video uh, showcasing your method uh, and, and trying it out myself. Because what I normally have done is just bought, you know, mono price, you know, either 14 or 16 a gauge and uh, used the, you know, the, the nylon braiding and then um, put the, you know, the boot on top and then a couple of uh, mono price, uh, you know, banana connectors, basically using everything mono price. Cause that's really all that's available to DIYers right now, unless they go the AliExpress, Alibaba route and order straight from China, which I tried that too, but that's just a little bit harder, not only shipping wise and, and just getting, you know, communicating with them out there. So if you have a different method that I should try, I would love to entertain it because I love building my own DIY stuff just as I build my subwoofers. And I'm actually going to build a pair of bookshelf speakers that I'm working with. Um, uh, I don't know if I should say, but I, I am working on a project with Dan Wiggins on. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, I don't know. What do you think? You want to, you want to show me your, your secret sauce of, uh, of, of, DIY speaker cable building? I don't know if I have any secret sauce. Uh, we do make spades of bananas that are really nice, that are really easy to work with. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was at AQ, I did watch those guys in the production room in Irvine build cables all day long, starting at 6.30 in the morning, and I don't know how mm -hmm. they do it. Uh, and, I mean, they are craftsmen and artisans, and, you know, the other cable companies have, you know, craftsmen and artisans. Uh, Cardis, same thing. Uh, mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't know how those folks do it every day. So maybe you and I get our arthritic hands together and some connectors and uh, and have a go at it. But, well, uh, you can make some great homemade speaker cables. You can. You can. I, I have some myself. I, I don't I'm not using them right now because I, I definitely want to I want to perfect that craft, you know, because <laughs> right now they look kind of funky. But uh, <laughs> um, yeah, when I, I watched actually I watched a while back a, a video online of Audio Quest's process of how they, how they build, you know, the cables and everything. And I, I imagine Pangea has a similar, um, you know, similar process they use to building their cables, but they seem to have a lot of tools that help them along the way <laughs> that may not be as readily available to the, to the normal DIYer, you know, uh, or the normal person that doesn't have a, a huge shop in their garage or what, whatnot. So, um, but yeah, if I can find a way where I can build a cable without, you know, hurt it, like make, making my hands hurt. I would love to love to do that again. But the, the fact is though, uh, a lot of people just want to buy ready made, ready made, ready to go plug and play. Mm -hmm. And Pangea offers that, that ease of not only that, that, that quality, but they offer the, the, the value too, the price, the price value. Cause I saw the first time I saw a Pangea cable was at my friend Giles's house, home theater fanatics. He has one of your phono cables because I think he's going to be um, looking into a, a record player here soon. And I saw the cable and I, at first I took a glance and I'm like, whoa, like, what is that? You know, I'm like, I don't know. And then I looked closer and I saw the Pangea branding on it. And I'm like, wow, like it, it's sturdy. It's it just feels like quality. You know, it doesn't feel like you're buying something from Walmart or from Target or from, you know, uh, even some of the Best Buy stuff, but uh, <clears throat> it just felt felt great, man. Really did. 
Yeah, thanks for that's a ninety nine dollar phono cable. It's one point two five meters long. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got the you know Pangea RCAs on it. Um, everything inside was designed by Jay Victor. Every all the materials was specified by Jay. Uh, even the little ground lugs that are on there for grounding your turntable to your phono preamp. Um, that's I mean that's all us. The the little breakouts the breakouts are the little plastic molded parts that hold the left and the right channels together. That's all of our own tooling, all of our own molding, all of our own branding. It is our cable. And, you know, could we charge $300 for it or $250? Yeah, probably there'd be more money in the bank for us. But $99 just really seemed like a fair price. We're able to make a few dollars on it and pass along pretty good value, I think. Yeah, I think it's great value because uh, a lot of companies aren't – uh, I guess, uh, I don't know if I want to go down this rabbit hole, but um, I've noticed uh, in the time I've been in this business uh, and, and the companies I've dealt with and the companies I've, I've, you know, seen and experienced, even at shows, you know, um, there's a lot of companies that price their products way above the value they're providing. And there's a reason for that. Uh, marketing, you know, if people are willing to pay it, People, when people see something really, really, really expensive, they automatically associate that with it being a high quality, high, you know, really good, really, really good product that is luxury, you know, luxury brand. And it gives them, if they buy it, it gives them, a, you know, that, that sense of prestige for owning it. Um, see, I don't believe in that. Uh, ethically, I don't believe in that. I think that, you know, yeah, yeah should a company make money? Of course. Absolutely. That's the only, that's the whole point of starting a business is to make money, but to do it in an ethical way, you know? And I think that you guys are doing that. I think you guys are creating value for the customer. You're not overpricing your products and you're providing something that they can have that sense of prestige and that sense of, you know, value for, for owning that product. So I, I applaud Pangea for that. Absolutely. Because this is that, especially in the cable industry, that is like one of the biggest number one, you know, uh, um, people or groups of people that, that like to do that. They like to overprice certain products. But um, going back to what you said a while in the beginning of the conversation about cables and about hearing that difference in quality and difference in, 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 in stuff, I went to Soundings. Not too long ago. Soundings yeah. here in, in right by DTC. Yeah, they're in the tech center there. Yeah. And they sat me down and they're like, all right, it's time to make you a believer, you know? <laughs> so they brought out a pair of Nordost and a pair. I can't remember the other second pair, uh, what it was called, uh, something star or something. I, I can't remember. But uh, they, you know, had me audition both. And what I discovered is that there's definitely... A, a difference in tonality for, for, for one, like one was had more, one was brighter than the other. Let's just say that. And I did enjoy one more than the other. So for me, that was automatically, okay, there is a difference, you know, people, this isn't something, this isn't, you know, mysticism. This is an actual audible difference I'm hearing in my ears. And I do enjoy one cable over the other. Now, what is it enough for me to not want to buy one or the other? I don't, I don't know, uh, but I'd rather have the one I enjoyed more, you know? And that's why I was telling everybody they need to trust their ears because I, I want people to do those AB tests because that's the way they're going to learn, you know, is, is by actually trying. Cause there's so many people that are naysayers and are just automatically, no, no, that's not you know, a real thing, but they haven't tried it. If you don't try it, how can you deny it? You know, that, that, my, that's my whole philosophy on it, because I, I had a, you know, a, an epiphany that day at soundings where I was like, uh, yeah, that, that, that sounds real good. You know, and that there is a difference. I hear it. We were going through some, uh, we were going through a, a Lingdorf audio and Peter Lingdorf's an awesome guy, um, uh, integrated amp into a pair of, uh, Vienna speakers. Um, which sounded fantastic regardless, you know, but 
Yeah, yeah. What was your? I'm kind of curious. What, where, when did you first figure out cables mattered and there was a difference in cables? What's, what's? Because that was my story. But <laughs> what's your story? So, uh, before AudioQuest, I was with Nakamichi. Oh wow! And yeah. Um, yeah, we had independent sales reps at that time, and uh, I was traveling. Uh, you know, different. You go to different shops and doing. I was a training technical manager for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, for both the home audio and the car audio side, because Knock had a big car audio side in the in the nineties, and um, we had visited a small shop in, and it was either Louisiana and Mississippi. And this, my memory fails me. I remember it was in the South. It was a very low key sales presentation, and we were just auditioning some um, uh, Nakamichi gear, seventeen and a half inch black box components. And the sales guy swapped out the generic RCAs that I had plugged in that came in the Nakamichi box because that's what I brought in with me. And um, he put in a very affordable pair of uh, Kimber cable interconnects. Mm. Okay. Maybe $120 or something like that at the time. I don't remember now the model, but it was transformational for me at that moment. I was uh, quite a bit younger then. (laughs) <laughs> obviously, but still, you know, new, new to my experience with cables, even though I was working for a manufacturer at that time. And that was kind of transformational for me at that point. And uh, from that point on, I kind of went out of my way as I was going through the, the training seminars around the U S and Nakamichi, um, listening, looking out, you know, looking for seeking for those experiences of the different brands. And then, that kind of led me to buying that, that first pair of AudioQuest Bedrock uh, uh, through one of the other sales reps that I knew uh, yeah. who was repping Nakamichi as well as, as AudioQuest. And it was just a, a love affair with the differences. The, it, I, I always thought it was an easy upgrade. It was mm-hmm. just a simple upgrade, an easy upgrade, uh, but expensive. Like even the, you know, I, I didn't pay full retail for the bedrock at the time. The rep got me the, you know, the family deal, the industry deal. Even then I thought, oh my gosh, this is really expensive. It was really hard for me to justify mm-hmm. spending that amount of money. Uh, you know, probably looking back, it probably wasn't that much money, but at, at the time, yeah. It's, in fact, I remember I didn't buy the eight foot pair. I bought the seven foot pair. So, mm-hmm. you know, cause I could save whatever it was, 35 or 45. Right. In, in that in that difference, but that's how that's how expensive it felt to me at that time. So I can really empathize with folks now, whether they're new to the audio industry and they're younger and they have a really tight budget to deal with. Maybe they're getting back into it because they found the vinyl in their basement or their attic, and mm-hmm. now they want to get a turntable and a phono preamp or and you know, they want to build their little system. So. I can completely relate to what that what that's like to, um, you know, to pull those hard earned dollars out of a wallet and spend it on cables or accessories, mm-hmm. things like that that you might not be sure are going to make a difference. Um, I do I do know that feeling. Well, well, one thing that actually you know really assures me that Pangea uh, has is in good hands also with you is because. I mean, you've dropped some really big names. You've dropped Kimber, you've dropped Cardis, you've dropped, obviously you, you had, you know, 12 years at AudioQuest. So you have the heritage of cables in, inside of you. So you know what a good cable is and you know what a good cable should, should feel like, sound like, perform. And for them to have you there as, you know, uh, you, I, I, I don't see you as a guy that would sell something he didn't believe in, you know? And the fact that you believe in Pangea and that you guys are, are kind of transitioning now into speaker cables and, and, and expanding and furniture. And it's like, what's, what's in store for next after, after the speaker cables and furniture and stuff, do you have anything else you guys are working on or or are you just going to focus on that core group of, of products? Well, uh, you had mentioned your Vulcan, and the furniture line has been super popular for us. Uh, so we are going to expand on that. Uh, I can't name the product yet; it hasn't made it uh, out of the factory yet. Um, but it is going to be related to vinyl. Mm. So turntable lovers out there are going to be really happy with our next product. The LP storage that we have in the bottom of our turntable rack 
has been really popular. So okay. if you are uh, a lover of vinyl, a listener to vinyl, you store vinyl at home, um, I think you can watch uh, Pangea or um, maybe even the Record Doctor brand, you know, one of our other brands, uh, watch those brands for things related to those categories. And um, we will have a lot to talk about. Maybe we should talk again in a couple of months when I'll actually have uh, some products that we can actually debut because they are right around the corner now. Awesome. We can only, uh, yeah, we can do that. And I can also give a, uh, give everybody my opinion uh, as to my experience with Pangea the, at that point. Um, and yeah, we'll have fun with it. We'll definitely have fun with it. Um, but yeah, Steve, I don't want to take up more of your time. I want to thank you for being on the show. I think that uh, now people have a good idea of who Pangea is and what to expect. Um, I will be linking on in the description below a link to your uh, Pan to the Pangea website, so that way they can check out the myriad of products out there that they can choose from, um, as well as uh, stay connected, so that way they can, uh, you know, figure out exactly um, when things come out and when pro products products get launched and everything. So. Yeah, Steve, thank you so much for, for hanging out with me and for being a part of my new season of Hi-Fi Hour. <laughs> and um, I hope to do a lot more of these because these are a lot of fun for me because I, I like chatting with people like you because uh, you guys are the heart and soul of this business. You know, you guys really are. And for me to uh, actually give a platform it is, is, a, is an honor for me because I get to not only learn about new products and amazing products like Pangea, but I also get to meet and obviously we didn't know we lived like we were neighbors now. So <laughs> that's, that's, that, that's really cool. And, um, and yeah, well, you, you'll be able to come over maybe to the, to my place and listen to the, to the setup. But once it gets all dialed in, I'm looking forward to it. Maybe we'll meet up at that Wahoo's down the street from you and go have lunch. Oh yeah. They also, I think they also have a Torchy's tacos over there too. I think somewhere in that area. So yeah, there's plenty of taco places to go to. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm excited for it and I thank you for being on the show and I hope to uh, hear from you uh, very soon with some uh, new exciting products in a couple months. All right, Mike. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Steve.